welcome. This is Art Dust, hosted by me, Glenda Gibson and me, Donna Druid. That's right, Glenda said, do you want to start? And I was like, oh, I've not done that before. What's the script? <laughs> well, she's forgot to mention the topic, which is... Oh, yeah, the play, place, being in place or place and how it affects you. Yeah, place. Place does affect us. I mean, I'm very aware that I wasn't born here and that I have moved from Sussex, went off to university in Yorkshire and then settled here in Leicestershire. It's very different. What is she talking about? I've moved from Australia. Yeah, but <laughs> the, the culture in here in Leicestershire is very different. People are a bit more obsessed about food. Cake is a real issue here. <laughs> Cake is a big deal. <laughs> uh, certainly is. That is. Delicious. Delicious and wonderful cake, and you can't keep up with it. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, yeah. It's, um, but, yeah, place can really affect you. Uh, where you are, at the, where you live, can really affect what work you put out. Mm. Uh, it can affect your thinking after a while being here like so when i lived by the sea all i saw you know i saw the south downs in the sea and that was my world was very sea central and very coastal and i was very aware of how the weather was different and that would come across in what i was making and doing i think it affects you like yeah, you kind of understand the term batten down the hatches when you've got a sea storm coming in. <laughs> mm. But uh, I think I, it has... Oh. I, I just remembered uh, Louise Fletcher was saying the other day that uh, her... Uh, she's been to America and all over the place, but when she came back to Yorkshire, her desire to paint welled up. It just came back. She hadn't been yes. interested in painting. But she came back to Yorkshire and, and that's what she paints. She paints York, Yorkshire and yeah. in response to Ted Hughes and things like that. I know so. that the, the two ladies I was speaking of in a different podcast episode, when they went came back from their re residential, they found that they really struggled to get back into the mindset of where they are now. That it actually, it's really affected them. They were in this place of hyper-productivity on the residential and then when they've come back to their own space at home and they've come back to their own countries, they've really struggled to get back into the rhythm of the daily lifeness. And mm. I think each place has its own rhythm of living. And that can really, and that, that of just being completely absorbed to, and being in a swimming pool almost of art and creativity and then coming back and you're like, oh, I'm on dry land again. How does this work? Mm. I, I think there's a, a real element of um, that's it's really different. And you have to feed yourself differently, creatively, because here where we are in Bosford, there's been galleries on and off. Um, people have all tried, a variety of different people have tried to have galleries where we are. But it's not it's not an easy land to kind of work in. No. And I sometimes have a bit of a grumble about that, but I think actually this is where God's put me, yes. given me Donna, which is lovely. Um, and I don't have to walk very far before I'm in the countryside. Yes. Um, and so it, it is, and, and there's not a, that loud sound of traffic constantly. Um, oh, I don't know. I can open my bathroom window and hear the A52. That's quite loud. <laughs> yes, that's true, but it's not. It's not like you've got you can't no. yourself think that you're walking down a city street. Yeah, kind of. It thing, is very it? peaceful here, and it's really yeah. easy just to walk into the countryside from here, and then you you know it's like a two minute walk from my house. I'm in the field. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a very much a, an element of an understanding. I think when you live somewhere, you understand, you begin to understand the history of the place and what's made that place thrive and survive where other places just disappear. Mm. It, history of a place can be really, really important. Um, 
Yeah. I'm not a bit I'm not particularly that interested in history. I'm not a historian and it's not a big thing for me and Australian history is like so short. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, a building a hundred years old is really old in Australia. Um yeah, but you have Aboriginal history and that's really different. I mean, that's so completely different to it is, and that's very ancient. Yeah. Yeah. But so so yeah, so I've been thinking thinking about place in because I've been thinking about residencies and I can remember in Australia I used to borrow the artist. <laughs> Those of you that do watercolour might uh, subscribe to that magazine. Yeah. I used to borrow it from my local library, Nalunga Library, and I loved the back cover where there was always these talk about come on this art retreat in Devon, exotic Devon or uh, yeah. <laughs> Provence and uh, paint uh, with this artist and create this one. And it was just the most delicious thought that I could go somewhere really beautiful and and just paint and have an art tutor there to give me some tips of course it was ridiculous apart from being on the other side of the world it was ridiculous money um but um as i've been doing my cv <laughs> and they suggest you put your residencies down and i yeah. don't have any residencies <laughs> i did <laughs> residencies thinking. in primary schools and that's a really weird thing to do because they just gave you a room and then you were kind of expected to work and then occasionally you'd come out and do some work with, with some kids and then you'd go back to your space again. Very strange mm. and it was a thing to do, but, yeah. But this, this, this whole thing about residency is about a sense of uh, place and I realised that in the first uh, 15 years of my life I lived in 15 different houses and I actually love thinking about houses and how to renovate them and how to change them. And, and that's something I used to spend a lot of time talking to my mother about. And then I've come here and in this house I'm in now, been in this house for 22 years, I think it is, mm -hmm. um, which is the longest I've ever been in any one house. Uh, yeah. And every time I think about, you know, you go on holiday and think, oh, I'd like to live by the sea or whatever. But, but I come back here and I go, yeah not a bad house I'm not overlooked I get the sun all the, all the way around and England is temperate it's never too cold it's never too hot um, I've got a nice garden I've got chickens in my garden and you think no it's all right that's all right to live here <laughs> in this beautiful English village which is where I've always wanted to live anyway so place place can have a big effect on you but I wonder about constant moving around that I did, how that's affected the way I see place anyway, you know, and home. Yeah, where um, is home? I think home is always going to be Sussex. But I think for me it's home is always the place where I was born and where I spent those formative childhood years. And, you know, that's along the south coast and that's just never going to change. And for my children, here is always going to be home. They they can live wherever in the world, but that will be the same for them. That you know that that sense of place of being home. But yeah, we, it took me a long time when we moved here to start calling this house home. It felt very uncomfortable thing to say. Mm. Very, yes, you, very yeah. You didn't like it, did you? Living in a village no. at first. No. No. I don't know if you like it now, but <laughs> it's a very goldfish <clears throat> bowl environment. Everyone can yeah. say that, oh, you know, everyone will know what you're doing. And it's like, it's true. It's true. They do. <laughs> Very true. But in a way, that's that's nice yeah. because you become a part of this big yeah. family. Yeah, you do. And, and like a family, it's not always great. <laughs> no, and it's not. Yeah, but then when 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 bad things happen, they step in. And, yeah, there's, there's a. Yeah, there's a real. I, a I think it's sense. amazing. Yeah, the things we've done as a village for people that have had real needs, you know, yeah. going from an empty house to a full house of furniture and full fridge of food for somebody that needed it in within yeah. days. Um, that's the sort of thing that can happen in a village. Yeah, and, it is. And then you have that real sense of place. I, 
yeah, but I yeah, know. I I like the I I like the things that make my home mine now. Like, I like like all my, I think they're called tchotchkes, or <laughs> the things that I've collected. Um, I've really understood. Oh, you... Yeah, I've really understood about making my home mine. I've really understood that sense of well, what makes my home my home, and not my parents' home or my or my friends' houses. Well, these are the things that I love, and those are the things that go on my walls or in my collections. Mm -hmm. Those are, you know, I love the way the light comes through certain windows and just catches. I yeah, like rain. I like like I have those prisms, and then I have rim, rainbows on my ceiling. I love that. I love that sense of the light coming through the windows and I've painted the returns yellow that's just yeah 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 well, we were talking the other day weren't we about um Bob Ross if you yes. look at all his paintings it's it's actually the road to his house yes <laughs> so so he painted where he was and of course I was remembering Monet who just painted his pond all the time yeah and Suzanne, he painted the landscape around him. Van Gogh's the same. Yeah, Pizarro. They painted, yeah. yeah. So it's not, you know, in the, the people who painted cityscapes inside Paris, um, you know, at certain time periods, you have those pictures of those images of those women in bars and, you know, the mm. dancers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, and Turner painted London and because he was hosted by the people at Petworth House, he has a had a um, patron of the guy who I can't remember his name. Sorry, that's the person who used to own Petworth House. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that they they the pe people at Petworth House liked throwing a village party, and they had artists stay in their house and turn. There are turners which you can get really close to, which is amazing. I actually really like the fact that if you go to Petworth House. You can get your nose about this far away from a painting and you can look at all the tiny details that are just lost. Because you know when you get the photo that's inside the magazine and it's yay, like yay big and then when you actually see a painting that's eight foot by six foot and there's this mm. painting of and it's got a tiny bit of rigging on a boat over here but this amazing amorphous cloud of yellow in the middle with and it looks like it, and in the picture you get that's this big, you just get this sense of the scale, the, the largeness of the sky and the weather. But what you don't get is the fact that actually he still put in the rigging on the boat, which is this big in the front. Mm. And like, you know, the sense of scale is just amazing. But yes, yeah. but that, that whole thing of painting where you're at and capturing a moment and you're capturing a moment of history. So that place, mm -hmm. your home has a place in the history. But yeah. It does. It, it really does. Really shape you. Shape and slow you down. So if you live in London, if you walk in London, you walk really fast. Everybody's walking really fast, and it's like London speed. My kids have nicknamed it. Mummy girls has gone into London speed now. That's it. She's gone. <laughs> She's walking with the crowd. But we're here. You wouldn't walk that fast. There's just no need. Where are you going to go? <laughs> Five minutes doing? around the village. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it changes your attitude to what you're doing. I did have um, uh, something from uh, Sketchbook Revival. This lady painted, drew things in her house um, as her drawing practice. And I, I started that, but I ruined the book and had to throw it away. But I, I really like that idea of capturing the stuff I've got sitting around my house in in drawings and just keeping them. And looking at them a long time because I'm drawing them and just really yeah. enjoying them. Yeah, I did a, a, cu a colour challenge, one of those Instagram challenges where you paint something every day from the house that's a colour. And I remember painting that yellow jug you brought back from Australia for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a little toy truck. Donna's favourite colour is yellow. It's it easy to buy her presents. <laughs> Guess what colour your prison is, Donna? Is it yellow? <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, it's Donna's yeah. birthday very soon. Yeah, see, flowers are out. See these flowers? They're Donna's flowers. The yellow oh, so, flowers. <laughs> I was saying to her earlier, so when she leaves home, I will give her some yellow flowers. She goes, why? I said, because they'll flower on your birthday. They were just yeah. like, you know, oh, she'll give you some as little roots. <laughs> I've got some in my garden. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I was going to say something else about things to do with objects in your house. Oh, yes. So um, I visited a friend recently and she's painting vases and uh, with collage and uh, and lots of different mark making. They're really good, really lovely, yeah. lovely colour palette. But uh, when I was talking to her about it, those vases, uh, quite a lot of them are, were her mother's. Yes. And it's a part of her holding on to her relationship with her mother and a memory of her mother by painting mm. her vases. So, you know, I don't know even if she owns them, but she certainly got photographs of them and now she's making artworks um, out of the things where you are. Yeah, so place, place obviously does affect where you are. And another way place has affected me is... I see things with Australian eyes and what that means is in Australia there's a lot of light so you can tolerate <laughs> a lot of bright colour. Yeah. It, it, it kind of works in Australia but here um, because the light is not as bright, the subtleties, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the subtlety between colours like those birds that are all brown here, now that I've got some English eyes happening, I can yeah. see that those birds are actually different colours and different subtle browns and grey greens and blue, all those. Yeah, and you can see the iridescence in them that you couldn't see perhaps, you didn't notice before, they were just a black bird, but then they actually yeah. when you look at a crow's feathers, they're really iridescent and they're kind of, yeah. I can remember sitting and looking at them and they're like greens and, yeah, they've got all the oils on them. They're beautiful, stunning feathers. Mm. yeah yeah but yeah, yeah i think it's about when you go to the mediterranean it's really bright so when they have their houses and they're painted white or blue they're those colors are really rich or if you go to italy and their their buildings are kind of a sandy color and and i could be going to south france and thinking well these buildings are all like looking like they're falling down and my dad said no, no, no. it's to do with the fact that so much so much heat that they it peels off it's and it's just a it's just to do with the fact that they go around re mend the houses and then the heat bakes it off so you get these crumbly lovely textures and i now i love those textures and i put them in my artwork because they are a memory of holidays in, in for, for me anyway but yeah mm. they are just spongy corners and paintings yeah so yeah so maybe I maybe guess this this podcast is about thinking about your place, yeah, where where you are, your house, your um, wider environment, how that is affecting your art, um, and whether you perhaps need to go on a holiday or a change or a residential to just um, give you a jolt into a different way of thinking and looking. Um, or whether you can just sit and enjoy where you are and paint Things over and you... over and over your pond in the garden if you're Monet. Yes. <laughs> the light of the water lilies in the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, the... I would love to visit his garden. It is like, oh, yeah, I'd love to go so visit that. It's on your list, isn't it? It's on it your is. bucket list. Not your bucket list. It's on is list. it a bucket list? Her no, list. not really. No, she it's a, list. a general list. <laughs> yeah. Things I do to have do. a list. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's working our way through it. Uh, yeah, so I think I think we've talked this out, have we? I think we have. Yeah, I think there there is a, a yeah a place where you, a things that you love about your place. So even if you just have, if you're temporarily living somewhere, it's about putting down understanding the light in your place and what you love about it. I think that there is a. Be, appreciate where you are kind of thing mm. Mm. yeah well wherever you are you can paint you can paint something can't you yeah you can paint something and and capturing that sense of place um even if it's not your favorite place that can speak to somebody else as well can't it yeah no what's her name uh roshan o farrell oh yes roshan o she, farrell yeah she's painted chairs by the fireplace and she painted but her work's changed and i wondered whether her work has changed because her children have left home and i wondered whether Ooh. she's now that sense of um she's been painting 
Wellington boots and coats and walking dogs, dogs, and you know, like your leads and all the things that you have in your life that are part of your family life and your knives and forks and your meals you've had. I wonder if that's made that change, whether it's because her children have left home that she's now painting abstracts. I wondered whether that's whether that's a thing that's happened or whether she's sub subconsciously that's happened for her. Mm, I don't know. It might be just an artist's. It might be just a development as an art because yeah. we don't, I mean, despite the fact we're meant to be recognised for a particular style, we we don't stay the same and it's not right no. to stay the same. We aren't no. the same people. I'm no. not the same person I was 10 years ago and in no. 10 years' time I'd be disappointed if I was the same person. You know, I want yeah. to be. You want to grow, keep growing, keep yeah, changing. And, and so you change. But the, it's still quite her colours. It's still very her, even though yeah. they're abstract. Yes, you can still see it as her. It's quite interesting that, that you can, uh, even though the subject matter is completely different, completely changed, there is still an mm. element of her. Yeah. yeah I wonder if that's she... the Irish sea and Irish sky that's coming in. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, really beautiful. Yes. Yeah, so I just thought we'd um, just raise the fact that be aware that place uh, does influence your art. It does. It really does. Okay, until next time. Yeah, so bye.